welcome to the Daily Exchange. Guys, we're here back. Consensus 2019, day two. Welcome, Lars from Concordium to the Daily Exchange. Thank you. How you been, man? So, Lars, you're the, uh, the, the chairman uh, behind uh, Concordium. Tell us about what is Concordium. Concordium is uh, an attempt to build a, a layer one protocol that's really thinking business from day one, you know. Um, a lot of the space has sort of developed out of various contexts historically, uh, and there's good reasons for that, I believe. But uh, but coming from from the, the finance industry and having done a lot of work on early internet uh, trading platforms and working with, with retail customers and derivatives and, and foreign exchange, etc., I think there's some parallels, and I think uh, I think a protocol built right from the start with with a view of of, of facilitating mainstream adoption is, is, has been a little bit lacking out there, uh, and that's I guess is why we don't have a mainstream adoption. Certainly not in the in the public uh, blockchain space. Clearly, a lot of stuff going on in private blockchains. But I think, looking back at my my experiences from from the internet, I think the really exciting bit is if we can get if we can get true mainstream adoption of the of the true public distributed blockchain, right? So that's what we're trying to f make the foundation for. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the key things there are right level and right balance between privacy, identity, transparency, etc. And, and of course, a lot of technical issues that, that need to improve. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess you're going from intranet to like internet. That's like the, the parallel when we, we all used to build intranets and then we sort of went pure cloud and internet. Um, and so, so what's the main problem you see right now with, I guess, public blockchains and how are you trying to solve that? It's a very good uh, parallel that I often use myself because we look back at the internet in the mid-90s and we were at Saxo Bank that I founded. We were very early adopters of that. Uh, and exactly everybody was trying to sort of build their own versions of the internet. It sounds bizarre today, but, but a lot of people were trying to do that without really appreciating the the enormous opportunities that be raised by a, by a broad marketplace. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's a parallel situation here. And the things that are going wrong in that right now is, of course, that uh, clearly the scalability issues, right? Mm -hmm. If you build a really successful application with a lot of users and serious critical mass, mm -hmm. where are you actually going to, where are you actually going to execute that? Where is the public dis blockchain that can carry not just one successful application but multiple successful applications I don't I don't see it right now mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's obviously one problem the other even bigger problem in my view is that uh, early early generations were built on uh, on the idea of anonymity, on the idea of sort of circumventing the establishment. And I have a lot of sympathy for that. I'm a bit of an anarchist and also libertarian myself. But having also run a, a bank for 25 years, I, I've seen what happened to, to regulation in that space. And I have absolutely no doubt that, that the same thing is going to happen in this space. And that just means that the idea of, of, of anonymity and the idea of sort of having having unregulated areas, uh, it's dead in the water, right? I mean, you can have some sympathy for, for sort of being a little bit free of the governments and the state, but it is dead in the water if you want mainstream adoption by, by banks, by serious businesses, etc. So that's what you need to deal with. And the most fundamental thing there is you cannot have actors that are entirely anonymous. You can't you no serious business going to interact on a network when theory or in, in, in real life it could be a terrorist, it could be a drug dealer at the other end of, 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 of the line, right? That's a hard problem to deal with because mm. who's going to issue the identity? And we're, we're working with a system of uh, multiple trusted identity issues where you can choose your own. You will not display your identity necessarily unless you want to to people, but we do know that ultimately if we, if need be, and under very specific agreed conditions, it's possible to go to the pointer of your account and, and trace back to who, who you actually are. Mm -hmm. And I think while that won't appeal to a lot of the early adopters of this space, it is just it is just the entry ticket to, to even be in real business, right? And, and we need to address it. On top of that, so we're trying to find a solution to that. I believe we have found good solutions to that. On top of that, of course, there are massive scalability issues that you need to address. So we're working with some very strong science, uh, particularly European-based universities uh, in the areas of, uh, of uh, how can we really increase scalability, you know, sharding, uh, state flattening, 
working up with your knowledge proofs uh, to, to also find this correct balance between the completely justified privacy that some people want around some of their transactions, but combining that with the real world's requirements for the ability to identify people. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole bunch of things that, that needs to improve the number of projects out there trying to address some of them. We're trying to address what we believe are most of uh, all of them because we we are sort of run by business people that have built substantial businesses in the past and and, and I, we believe we have a good feel for, for what it really needs for for, mm. for serious business to uh, to begin to adopt this space. Okay. And what are your sort of views on scalability? Like what, what kind of numbers are you guys sort of aiming for? Everybody's throwing around crazy numbers and, and I think uh, most people are vastly exaggerating, so I'm not going to throw a number out there now because yeah. I simply don't know. I mean, it depends on how efficient we can get the sharding, it depends uh, on, on how efficient the whole process is, but it's, but it's evident that if you don't have very substantial throughput per second, yes. you're not going to be able to be a, 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 like a, a real piece of infrastructure here, right? And I think that's, that's what we're trying to build. We're, we're trying to build the equivalent of an internet, and I don't think there's going to be just one of those, but build a piece of infrastructure that an SME, for example, say, "Hey, I can use some. I could use some of that for for improving my services in a given area. Ultimately, to build an entirely new business model, peer-to-peer business models, which are you know an incredible opportunity because uh, because the whole sort of trustless environment prevents so much business today that that, that that people don't even begin to appreciate how much could be done if you could establish trust in an easy way. But in the short run, I think it's more going to be more trivial applications. You know." provenance, uh, mm -hmm. immutability of data, obviously, mm -hmm. time stamping that, that many businesses could benefit from. And if we take the parallel with the internet, in the mid-90s, it was not the big businesses that were really adopting the internet. It was mm -hmm. it was smaller businesses that yep. saw a benefit and, and maybe some specialized businesses like my own yep. trading platform. Yep. Uh, so with um, the internet, obviously, it went from uh, it went, you know, obviously to a, a full public. You know, I, I guess no one really owned the protocol was kind of salted. Where do you think we are in the adoption of you know uh, the infrastructure and, 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 and blockchain in particular? Obviously, cryptocurrency is one application of that. But you know, we're building these these, these infrastructure and building these applications. Um, so just you know, I'm interested in where do you think we are in the cycle of of, of infrastructure? I think we're in 1997, and you probably were not around to observe that in depth at the time. I was actually. Uh, I, 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 I'd age well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> better, than, better than me, huh? <laughs> uh, I think we're about 1997, 1998. You know there's a potential. Mm -hmm. We probably underestimate that potential, except for people that are at this conference, but the vast majority of people who actually don't really care too much about blockchain, to be honest. Uh, I think that uh, everybody's looking for the big boys to yes. take the lead here. That's not the way it's going to be. It's going to be SMEs, it's going to be small players that actually take the lead in improving that, that this can work, that it can be used for something. So I think we're at an incredibly early stage here. Uh, I think that uh, there's still no real infrastructure out there that, that, mm -hmm. that will work for for bigger mainstream adoption for the reasons that we discussed. Um, so we're very early here. And yeah. if you look at like everybody, you know, the, the serious guys got, um, when you look at their charts where yeah. you hit like a three billion, uh, three, three trillion contribution to 2030, but when you look at the charts, you can't even see 18, you can't see 19, and I believe yeah. that's true. Yeah. You're right that there's a, there's an application called cryptocurrencies, which uh, many of us have had a lot of fun with, sure. and, and it's a nice speculative object, mm. uh, but it's, it's, it's not what this is about. Yeah. Right? It's about doing real business, and cryptocurrencies and tokens and coins are really just a historic thing to facilitate that yep. business and an interesting one of that yep. but it's not the purpose right the purpose yep. is doing real business and I think that I, I have two hats on here I'm, I'm trying to run this project yep. but I'm also uh, an investor in various, uh, in various areas it's not just blockchain I was okay. lucky to sell my bank and make a bit of money some while back so I'm, I'm probably putting like 10-15% of my investments into the blockchain space because I believe in it a lot but when I look at it as an investor I'm just forgetting from quality for now, mm -hmm. I look at there's two things. There's the protocol layer that yes. you can invest in, and there's the application layer. This was exactly the same in the mid '90s for for the internet, except you couldn't really invest in the protocol mm. because there wasn't a way to really get into into the protocol itself. Yes. 
a TCP IP, you couldn't, you couldn't get into it. Exactly, you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't own a share of the internet, no. right? Imagine if you owned a share on the internet. That, that, that business would be worth more than the entire US stock market put together, right? Yeah. Uh, here, actually, you have a chance to own a piece of the infrastructure. And that, to me, given that there's relatively few serious projects, yes. I'm not going to not mention none forgotten, but there's not an awful lot of projects out there trying to build that fundamental yes. infrastructure based yes. on good science. Yep. Whereas you have thousands of applications, just yep. like you had in the late 90s, and, and uh, sadly to say, most of them are going to fail because one, they won't have the user base, and second, if they do, they don't have the infrastructure. So how can you win on that basis, right? Makes sense. So as an investor, I'm trying to look to put my money into the five, ten serious place that I see on the protocol level, and maybe they'll be new, and maybe there's some we missed, but but I think it's far better chance of getting return on your money on actually picking the right protocol and get into those in the early stage than necessarily try to pick a winner yep. among a lot of, of, of applications. Many of them are relatively mature. And if you look at the look at the internet again as a parallel, the first wave uh, ended in the 2001 yes. bust. The real winners in that space with Amazon as a notable exception uh, really came in the second wave. Right? Yep. I mean, they came in sort of early zeros, not, not yep. in the late 90s, right? And I think it's going to be very similar. Yep. And I think everybody should, should try to dig a little bit into that history and understand what drove the internet, yep. understand what was worth in investing yes. in at the time. And I think it's good learnings. There won't be an exact parallel, that's clear, but there's good learnings to be had from that. Brilliant. Lars, last question. Um, we're, we've got a bit of uh, punchiness on our time today, but um, we asked everyone, New Year's Eve 2019, it's, what do you think the price of Bitcoin will be in two? Th I guess you know, in US dollars. This is not financial advice. Um, no, we not. ask everyone on the show. Uh, we've just seen it cross eight thousand uh, dollars. I know it's obviously not you know part of your full investment thesis, um, and I understand that. But it is you know it's it's a pretty interesting thing that gets people involved and it gets people Absolutely. into the market. And, and it's it's very good for the atmosphere and the whole space. I'm sure the mood is much better at this conference than it would have been a uh, four or five weeks ago. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. And I made a lot of money. Uh, no early stage investments on Bitcoin. I went in when it was in the low hundreds first time and, and that did me very well. It's a very difficult question you're asking because end of 2019, I think it's really hard to say. If you had asked me end of 2023, yeah. I would be really negative. I don't think it's going to go to the hundreds and thousands and millions and billions and I think it's going to go the other way, sadly, because it's going to get replaced by things that work better. And that early mover advantage, which I've seen in first mover advantage, which I've seen in multiple speculative plays over the years as, as a retail uh, investment bank, uh, that tends to go away. Yeah. So, so I would say in the end of 22, 23, you're going to see a Bitcoin that's relatively irrelevant. Okay. But in 19, where does a speculative hype go? I, I, I mean, if I should venture a guess, I think it'd be lower. Uh, this now, I think it's going to probably pop and go back down to yeah. a couple of thousand. But, but I feel much more, much more secure about that prediction a few years further on. Brilliant, Lars. Thank you so much for coming thank in you. and telling us all about your project as well. Uh, thank you, for thank you so me. much, guys. That's Lars uh, from Concordium. Uh, we're uh, we're going to keep going live today. So, Lars, thank you so oh, much. Yeah.